Welcome to this presentation about how to generate a custom schema for GraphQL. First, you need to download the needed resources. Just go into the store and click Download Latest Release. When you download the latest release, you have the ability to download the setup that you've used to install GraphQL and also the source code that will contain a complementary item and the mapping generator. You can select the one with the release that you've used to get the appropriate generator or if you want to get the latest version of the generator you can go directly on the full and latest source code and look at the generator mapping json folder in this case i will download the full package as a zip to get access to the file the system is downloading the current file this may take a while when the pack once the package has been downloaded you can unzip the content of the package. It, here in my case it was uh, downloaded into the download folder so I will just simply unzip the package and here I will use into the folder generator mapping I will select v3 or v4 in my case I am in v4 so I'll go into v4 folder and I will take need to take some of the items that are in the exe uh, of the uh, JSON mapping remember you have two cases. if you just want to generate new custom JSON based on the standard generator just go to exe folder if you want to customize the generator go to src in my case, I just want to take uh, those items. So I will take those three files and put them in a temporary folder of my drive here. Temporary folder, Java, and paste the file. From here, I will also need additional file, like the JSON file, override name, and schema to generate. If you don't take this file, the tool will generate new ones, but it will not behave exactly as the default uh, standard mapping. So we recommend you, of course, to always take those two files and place them next to uh, the file. You need now to configure uh, these two uh, items uh, that we have uh, downloaded. First, the schema to generate. And here you need to edit the schemas. What you will find here by default are the default uh, schemas. ITPA, BPA, and so on. Here, we don't want to regenerate the default schema, so we will place them to all to false. Uh, sorry, replace true by false, replace all. And what we will do is that we will uh, create our new uh, custom schema to generate. So it's gonna be my custom schema. And I'm gonna generate with the highest privilege as OPEX customizer. If you don't know what to put as a profile, just put OPEX Customizer. This is the uh, highest privilege profile that, that you can use. Here you need to put the ID of the meta model that you want. For that, you need to create in OPEX the meta model of the subsets that you want to see in the API. Just launch the administration, to, um, the OPEX web desktop. Go into the Meta Studio tab and here create the new meta model. Just simply say, new meta model um, my new schema whatever the name you put here this is just only for opex it doesn't have to be aligned with the, the name you've put into json just create a diagram you will need to use this particular id of this meta model to put into json so this is the id that you need to take absolute identifier just copy this and paste it here in the folder of Meta Model Absolute Transfer. You're good with the schema to generate in terms of configuration. Now you need, of course, to define what you want to see in your Meta Model to be generated. Here we're going to do a simple example where we want to expose the application and the business process. If you want to expose relationship between those two concepts, just simply uh, draw the relationship that may exist between those two uh, concepts. Let's say here between process and application. In case this association is deprecated, removed, or inherited, you will need to expose in these diagrams the actual 
real meta association that is used by the system. Otherwise, the link will not be generated. The common mistake that is seen is that the association is not in the diagrams, are not visible by the profile, and thus does not appear in the uh, generated JSON. From there, you can save and publish your work and close OPEX. You are now ready to launch the uh, tool, but for that you have to configure the runbat.file. Just edit this file. You will see that this file uh, will launch the jar that is called generator.json-mapping.jar with the GVM of OPEX. Uh, this is the default behavior and uh, I recommend you keep this behavior so that the settings of the GVM are accurate for OPEX. In this example, I'm running under OPEX v4. I will specify where this the jar file is located. If I am in debug mode, where is the folder where all the generated files will be located? Here in the same folder, Tom Java. What is the path of my environment? And what is the name of my repository? Obviously, it has to match what you have defined in your OPEX uh, administration. So if you open the desktop tool for the administration, you will see a path here for the environment. They are, it has to match the one that is here. And the name of the repository has to match the name of the repository that you see below. In my example, the repository is named uh, so. So I have to adjust because my repository is not so, so it's demo. And the L mean the log file. So the tool will generate log files, so it shows you where those logs are generated. Once you are good with the, the config of the schema to generate, the run bad config, and also you have created your schema in OPEX, you can simply run a CMD uh, command line and execute your uh, program. My program is located here, so I will simply go there and do the run that. So you will see the command line. Uh, when it works, you will start to see uh, the debug info, the, the parameters and so on. If it works, you will see the things uh, happening. If it doesn't work, you'll see nothing. In that example, it did not work. It didn't find the schema that I wanted to generate. So for that, I have to investigate the config file. If I come back here, schema to generate, nothing happened because remember, when I copy paste, I left it to false. If I put through and I re-execute again the same actions, now the system will actually find a schema to generate and will start to run it. You will see it will for each schema you will have a starting line saying the name of the, the schema to be generated, the opening of OPEX, the creation of the JSON, the size of the meta class that it has found, and for each meta class some elements. The details here depends or not if you have set the debug mode to true. In that example, I did left it to true. If you do not want to, to be detailed, just remove the minus D here in the command line. This may take a while depending on the complexity of the meta model you have chosen to expose. Now we are done. The schemas have been generated. So all is clear. The, the file will be located here, here. So I can go in my folder and find the generated schema. Here I will use the plugin of um, Notepad just to make some syntax structure to ease the reading of the, the file. So you see it has generated the meta class application and the meta class business process. By default, it has put all the, the meta attributes that are visible by the profile you used. Here, as we use customizer, we have all the meta attributes of the uh, meta class. And the relationship, we see the relationship that we have put between business process and a business application. Be careful, this, this, uh, this association or this attribute has to be visible at runtime by the profile that used to be uh, to run the API. Additional uh, technical items might be added automatically by the system. Interfaces, for example. Just do not edit any of those, as the system will need them as is to work. Okay, you now have your custom schemas and you are ready uh, to place it in the installation of OPEX. 
take your custom schema, go into the installation of OPEX, program file, mega, OPEX v4, .NET, OPEX GraphQL, one, config, v3 or v4, depending on where you are, and then custom. And just put here your custom file. This is where the system will load your custom file. If you want to uh, reference the schema, you have to edit the config so that it's available from the choice and endpoints. For that, you need to go into the IIS folder, inetpu, wroots, opex graphql, web config, and edit the value key called GraphQL schema, and at the end, add your new schema, my custom schemas. You are now ready to use your custom schema by calling the API or by using GraphQL to make your to build your queries. This is of course in the case where you do a new custom schemas. If you just want to extend an existing uh, schemas, you can choose to regenerate the full schemas by importing the MGL file that you can find in the source that you have downloaded. So if you go back here, generators, v4, MGL, you will find an MGL file to import that will contain all the schemas contains and used to generate the standard default uh, schemas for the API. You can also choose to extend uh, only the existing attributes and in that case you can also just do the delta by adding in your uh, headers the fact that you extend the ITPM. Thank you for your attention and now it's your time to create your custom schema.